hello Blue Marble Riders, here we are again with another Royal Enfield. Very similar to the Int 650 in many ways. Major differences, the tank size is 3.3 gallons instead of 3.6. The seat height about half an inch lower, 31 inches instead of 31 and a half. The pegs are a little bit further back than on the Int 650. And also, of course, we've got the clip-ons at the front here. So they're fixed quite low down here. Not as low as you might imagine though, quite a comfortable riding position. Not having to crick my neck too much to look up. So it looks like about a two and a half inch riser on this. So it's quite nice, they're not down here. They're, they're quite far up. So it's a sporty position. And with the pegs back a few inches, it feels very natural. Other than that, we've got the same Brembo brake at the front, the same steel braided line, all the same electronics with the ABS and the Pirelli Phantom which I found really confidence inspiring on the last ride. So it's the same 648cc engine. It puts out 38 foot-pounds of torque, about 47 horsepower, and it weighs about 437 pounds, which is about five pounds lighter than the Int 650. Same kick-up pipes, same suspension, same adjustable for preload, not adjustable on the front, and same Brembo on the back, again with beautiful steel braided lines. Seat's different, of course. Little domed on the back, but sort of fast back seat. One thing I'll say is this uh, presently is a 650, and a lot of you have been talking to me about that, uh, I think it's the 865 kit maybe, um, and whether that can be warranted and how easy it is to put in. Well, boy, do I have news for you. Paul at Bayview Motorcycles in Parksville has lent me this bike and uh, he's going to take it back and this is the very one they're going to upgrade to an 865 and I'm going to ride the same bike again just for you and let you know what it's like. Well, let's get on with this one though. Okay boys and girls, what's the Dr. Mayhem like to start? Pretty similar to the Int 650. Controls are all the same. Pull clutch in. And there's that very, very nice rumble. Oh, it's nice, I like it. Like it a lot, as I did the last time. Nice, you give it a rev and you can feel a little few vibes through the insides of your legs here where they touch the edge of the, but other than that, she's, uh, she feels very, very uh, rubber mounted. Very nice. Okay, as I said, the riding position. Right now, that's the easy to flat foot. I can stand way off this. I'm, I'm six foot, 34, inch inseam and I can stand right off the uh, off the bike here and I've got at least three or four inches underneath my butt just getting your feet on the pegs fall right to right to heel right where they should be and uh, well without any more let, let's get riding and have some fun on this thing and and talk even with the uh, the clip-ons with the three inch risers here it's super easy to ride not not hard at all okay very balanced roll off the throttle and there's no great big sort of throw you over the handlebar moment it's just a nice nice amount of uh, of engine braking okay let's close this down because it's a cold day today we started uh, we started with a frost this morning where I live anyway and uh, oh I would guess it's about six seven degrees and slick road so I'm not gonna be pushing it too hard today so let's talk about the riding position Everything falls really, really nicely to hand. Legs fall into these, uh, just below these hollows in the tank here. Uh, lockable, again, look at that. And this is the Dr. Mayhem Continental GT. So it's a little bit more expensive than the Int 650. You're looking at about 8.6 for this one. So what, what's the riding position like? Really, really nice. I, am, I was expecting to be way down and having to really wrench up, but I'm actually up quite a bit. I'm not feeling any weight on my wrists right now. No problems at all. Certainly comfortable. Let's see if we can just pop around the inside here. Same delicious pickup on the bike. Yeah, so the riding position is comfortable and natural. I mean, I've never ridden this bike before and the brake is falling to hand, the rear brake, the gears, no miss gears, it, everything feels good. The handlebars are in just the right position for me with those risers on them. Any lower and uh, I think it would be prohibitive for me. 3000 RPM, just about 48 miles an hour. Okay, and she's bumbling along nicely. What's she got if I 
Yeah, nice talkie. She doesn't complain when you roll her on either. And now down to fourth. Nice. And she feels very comfortable there as well. We're, we're a little slower now. I'm following a mobile Christmas tree and it's uh, a little difficult to do any more than what I'm doing here. So it just feels like great to be alive on this bike. Bars are not as wide, so it tends to track track straighter and a uh, little slighter firmer input to get her to to get her to turn, but she's happy to do it, no problem. She's not resisting. Feels very light. Can't feel any uh, any buffeting or any any bad vibes from the wind, anything like that. So and I'm going to take it very easy around here because the roads are very slick and there are patches of frost in places. So still fairly early, waiting for the uh, sun to really dry some of this road out. Oh, that's nice. Yes, 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 yes. A little salt on the road this morning. Yeah, oh, liking it. Smooth, smooth, but chunky. Do you know what I mean? It's got that lovely, lovely chunkiness to it, that lovely uh, pulse that you can feel off the, off the motor here. Yeah, you can just swing around. I'm back in the 60s, folks. So all the while, while I'm riding this, I'm thinking, well, now which one would I, which one would I go for? My personal preference, not yours, not the guy down the road, mine. Which one would I go for? Too early to tell. I'm enjoying this, enjoying it a lot. I'm liking the bar height. I'm liking the sitting forward. I'm liking the feeling of the tank. I feel, I feel part of this bike again. It's a narrower tank, sculpted in at the side, as you'll be able to see in a minute when we do a little another walk around. And uh, your legs fit, my legs fit quite naturally around it. It's, it feels narrower. It feels much narrower than the other bike. The gearbox again. You know, I've ridden two of these now and they've both had the same marvelous gearbox. It is smooth, as I said last time. You just snick it up there and it's in. Very nice. They both feel planted. It feels, reminds me of my old cafe racer for obvious reasons. The bars are narrower and you put a little bit of input just to, just to bring her around the corner. Okay, you're using your body a little bit more on this bike, which is, I think, what it's all about, really. That's why you want a bike like this with the wider bars much smaller input into them to get the, bar, the bike to move. Someone wrote to me if I have, uh, would I be able to, would it be a good bike to get with an A2 license? Yeah, yeah, it would be a good bike to get with an A2 license. It would be exciting. You're forward. Oh, it's got a lovely, I'm really getting it now. It's, it's very talky. It doesn't matter what gear you're in. It's just smiles for miles. The racier stance, is sort of getting me to roll it on a little more and play play a little more than I was on the last one but again it's the same thing I'm enjoying the ride so much that I don't really I don't really need to uh, do go colossally fast to have a great deal of fun I mean it's a bloody brilliant day sun's out it's a little chilly but the sun's out I'm on a cafe racer here with a vertical twin which doesn't have any annoying vibes to work around. It's just got that pulse that you feel that's all through there. You know, you don't even need to look at the tachometer. You know how the engine is revving. Lovely sound again, there's that sound. You shut the throttle, I can do it here. And you feel that deep resonance. That's what it is, it's a resonance that comes through you. Very, very nice. Prepare to stop construction. Okay, well, I think that's our cue to do a little bit of a turn here. Just checking as I'm not quite used to the uh, mirrors yet. Let's go to my favorite place. Park her in a little bit of sun. There she is. Yeah, she is nice. God, it's hard to say which one I would go for. I, I'm, I'm loving the look of that. It, uh, 
it's very sporty looking isn't it looks very cafe like I like that walking around it yeah I mean look look at the tank you just want to get on it inviting very very inviting yeah, I, I stood here last time with the Interceptor 650 and was saying pretty much the same things. It's a, it's a steal of a deal. It's a lovely bike. I mean, the sole of it is the same. You're just in a slightly more sporty uh, position. I'm going to bring my mask up here. There we go. Now on this one you'll notice it's got the black interior to the uh, wheels. But the Orange Crush and one other, I think, have the silver. That's something for you to consider when you're thinking about these bikes. All sorts of things you can do, of course. Okay, there are uh, some of these, by the way, have much shorter saddles. They come down to about here, and they have the subframe uh, hanging out at the end there. And uh, so you can, you can modify that too. You can take the rear end off this thing and change it as well, make it look a little more cafe-like. Um, s and pipes and of course as we talked about that 865 uh, kit which brings her up to 70 horsepower and this bike is going to get that treatment and I'm going to take her out again after she's done so I've got to thank Paul and Peter up at Bayview Custom Motorcycle in Parksville for doing that and then giving me the chance to go out on the same bike and let you know what my impressions are I'm, I'm looking forward to it I mean would I go for it? I don't know. I feel the bike uh, the bike is very satisfactory like it is. It's got the, a nice amount of torque to it. Drives you out of corners and up hills in, in you know, fourth gear, no problem. Um, very satisfied with that. Yeah, I, I'm loving the look of this thing. I'm going to do a shout out here. Andy, 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 uh, Andy on Gabriola. You want this. It is beautiful. You know, someone said to me, it's, you know, you can talk about what the nicest bikes are, but it's, a, it's as much about the rider and your mood. And, and you're right. It is the mood you're in. Yeah, what a day. And what a bike. Nice docking, sir. Nice and cautious. Good stuff. All right. One thing I will say, the only negative I can find on it, it is a bit of a pain because of the slightly further back on the Continental GT, the slightly further back foot pegs, that the actual side stand is hidden underneath it. So when you swing it back like that, it's hard to, uh, hard to get your foot on it. You have to be careful. You don't want a dropper. One thing I'll notice on this one is it does not seem to have a center stand. You know, I'm liking how gentle the power comes on on these things. It's nice. You've got enough force, enough nice kick. There's nothing wild and crazy. All you're doing is moving through your environment on a good old-fashioned motorcycle with all the modern frills and spills that the new ones give you. The frame on this, the uh, planted feeling, the feeling of uh, road holding on it is second to none. Someone was telling me it's a Harris frame that uh, Royal Enfield uh, bought up and used the, the Harris frame people to do this. And, and it tell, you can tell, it's streets ahead of the Kawasaki W800. The Bonneville, the old Bonnevilles anyway. I haven't ridden a new one recently, but it's streets ahead of them. And the suspension for the speeds that you do with it is wonderfully compliant and at the same time precise. Woo, oil, look at that, everywhere. Nasty. Yeah, it just goes straight into the corners. Oh, I like it there. Four and a half, she makes a wonderful, uh, quite a thrilling shiver. Shiver me timbers. Oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. Smooth all the way up, too. What a pleasant, pleasant bike. That tactile feeling, that rewarding feeling of changing gear on this thing. And it doesn't goad you. Doesn't goad you along. What a lovely bike. Great afternoon bike to take up the coast road of Vancouver Island and uh, stop up for Fanny's Bay for some oysters. FBI. Go grab some... Uh, 
some some of your favorite liquid refreshment and then amble back down maybe stop at the shady rest and show her off a little bit with the other bikes you know So who's going to buy this bike? You know, learners could definitely go for this bike, but this isn't what it's all about. This bike is for the established rider, someone who wants something just for fun. It, this is a fun bike. It would be equally as happy in the urban environment as out on these country lanes like I am right now. It would be happy on the highway because of your position. Um, someone's going to ask me if I can tour with this. I probably wouldn't choose this bike to tour. That's not what this bike is about. It's about something else. It's about days like this, sunny days, those days where you get a little bit of time to yourself and you just want to go and fetch one thing from the store, or even better, you want to plan a day to yourself just to ride some lovely windy roads. The competitors for it, well, come to mind are the Bonnevilles and the Thruxtons and the V7s from Motogazi. I don't think I would look at those, to tell you the truth. Maybe the Guzzi, because I think it's got a little bit of character. But this, this for me does it. It's an extraordinary value for money. And at the same time, no less bike for it. So there you have it. My ride on the Continental GT. The Dr. Mayhem. Royal Enfield Continental GT. Loving it. Once again, thanks for watching everyone. If this is the first time you've watched, please consider subscribing. I do product reviews, motorcycle reviews, off-road and on-road vlogs, as well as tours. Don't forget to follow me on social media, that's Instagram, Facebook and Twitter, and to like, and especially, I'm begging you here folks, subscribe. This is the Blue Marble Rider, out.